Greetings in Jesus' name this morning. Welcome, everyone. Thankful to see you, your faces again, and uh, sing together. We're going to pray, and uh, if you have some prayer requests for us this morning, or anyone in the audience. Brother, and Josue, Brother Raul and Josue, uh, sick, and especially Josue, now that it seems like Brother Raul, his father is uh, uh, seeing light at the end of the tunnel, but Josue not so much yet, I didn't hear it this morning, but not feel very good. Yes. Ask the Lord to have mercy on our brothers in Mexico and sisters. Keep praying for Connie and her mom. Connie and her mother. This is Junior Morgan and the family that lost their son yesterday. They were crying. Junior, Junior Wormington. Junior Wormington lost a son? Youngest boy. Youngest boy. What was his name? Uh, Brian. Yeah. Oh, I see. Not sure what happened. Wow, okay, let's pray for them. Let's lift them up. Junior Wormington, Junior Wormington family. Lost a son. What what day was that, did you say? Friday afternoon. Friday afternoon. Oh. Any others? Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity to gather again this morning. Think of your mercies to us and, and, and implore future good, like the hymn says, and, uh, and your continued mercy on us. We ask for our brothers and sisters in Mexico, especially Josue and Brother Raul, who are struggling with the virus protect them and bless them and give them peace, we ask. Um, we pray for Connie and her mother. Uh, ask for the Junior Wormington family, dear God. Have mercy on them. And be with them in this time of grieving. Dear Lord, thank you again for the love of Jesus. He was willing to come and, and show us you so we learn more about you, dear Father. Thank you now. Bless our songs. Bless Brother David with the message. Thank you, Lord, for all these blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. You can stand. think about. Remember Brother David mentioned about not being nasal. Try to get it down here. Um, don't just put out lots of air when you're singing. Try to try to get good fuel mileage. Try to make it work. Try to make the uh, air that you're putting out come with sound. And uh, and you have to relax your voice enough. You have not relax your your vocal cords down here so much that just lots of air come out. No. Relax them, but also tighten them up. Remember? It's kind of like that in there, and you're just going like that. You're making those cords or bands in there just vibrate real nice. And let's try to keep on time. 
keep glancing up here to see where my hand is. That you don't drag or rush on ahead like little children do when their parents are going through a museum <coughs> or when they're going on a hike. Johnny, come back. Or like um, my brother-in-law calling his little boy Samuel, but he's saying it in Spanish, Samuelito, Samuelito. And his little boy was just running away from his daddy. All right. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus and Nazarene. I think maybe we'll sing first. Uh, we'll, we'll skip verse 4 in 1, 2, 3, and 5. Alright, we're going to sing now. Ready? But watch that hand a little bit. As soon as you get a chance, look up and see where we're at. One hundred four. you have it there, Ella? Are you ready? I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned Any of you, any of the others, if you feel like it, don't. Let's go. Mm, three.
Let's worry about that later. The last mile of the way. One forty four. Johnson Oakman Junior. Who is Johnson Oakman Senior? He was his daddy. And uh, he could sing a lot better than Junior. It is said that Junior would sit beside his daddy and just enjoy hearing him sing the old hymns. And he just couldn't sing as well. But he decided to write hymns. Does any of you, other than my boys uh, and girls, know uh, any of the other hymns in our book that Johnson Oakman Jr. wrote? Or hymns that you know? There are two of them in here. Okay, Roger. Count your many blessings. Yeah, count your many blessings. And uh, another one is higher ground. Uh, Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith from heaven's table land. Uh, and there's another one that we know pretty well. Can't think of it right now. I can't think of it right now, but uh, the last mile of the way. Let's try this. How many of you know it? Tyler, who else? Okay, we'll try to gently sing it. Give you time to look up here a little bit. Give you time to keep those vocal cords enough relaxed and stretched out. Good sound out there. And don't be afraid. Just sing. It's really easy. Mm. If I walk in the pathway of duty, if I work till the close of the I shall see the great king in his beauty when I've gone the last mile of the way. When I've gone the last mile of the way, I will rest at the close of the day. And I know. back up there. Oh, if for Christ I proclaim the glad story, if I see four sheep gone astray, I am sure he will show me his glory when I go Oh, 
And I know He said he, he wrote this little poem one time. Now right at the beginning of his his hymn writing career, he said he made the following dedication. Let others sing of rights or wrongs. Sing anything that pleases. But while they're singing other songs, I'll sing a song for Jesus. That's a neat little line there. Do you know the hymn? No, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. How many of you have heard that? Good. We have more of them. Well, that's uh, encouraging. Okay, Glory Gates. Stand up again. 143. One of these days the virus is going to be ended and we're going to get in those rest homes again. We're going to sing. And uh, the last mile of the way is well known to the older folks. And glory gates as well. I am looking for the city bill of God where the many mansions be. Here's another easy one. Again. We need E flat, don't we? Thank you. 
give you a picture of our God welcoming the world to come? One forty five. I want to be a worker. Do you, do you know it? Um, do you think the old people know it? Guess. If you don't know this, guess. Oh, yeah, they do. Okay. I want to be a worker. This is, I can't sing this hymn without thinking of a Puerto Rican that we had um, with our family when I was maybe uh, 12 years old, 12, 12, no, 11 or 12. And he he stayed with us for a while, and he he just loved this hymn. It was his favorite, and he would say it halfway between English and Spanish. Um, in the vineyard of the Lord is kind of the, what people know this as. In the vineyard of the Lord, he'd say, "In the vineyard, in the vineyard, the Señor, the Señor." He would he would, uh, he would mix it a little bit. I want to be a worker.
All of you. Sylvester. Ray. That was Ray. No. Arthur, help him out. So. I tell you what, let's do it this way. When someone does it well, just join in with him then, but let him do it first. And if someone does it wrong, correct it. Okay? Do it that way.
found us, you found us. Theodore Roosevelt said, far away the best prize that life has to offer is a chance to work hard at, some, at work worth doing. Jesus told the disciples, don't worry about tomorrow for each, each day, tomorrow will take care of itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. That's in Matthew 6, 34. There's an old Arab proverb and it says, if you know yourself, then you can't be harmed by what people say about you. And um, that's, that's just neat because if, if you know that if, you're, if, you're, if, if people are saying that you've done bad things or that, um, then, and you know you haven't, then you don't have to be harmed by what they say and get all upset about it. David has said that the little things are what count instead of doing big leaps. Take your time and do the little things. Do not put off till tomorrow what you can do today. Uh, I would tell a lot, the only thing you're given in this world is your word. And if you mess that up, you don't got anything. Calm and steady, and if you quit, you lose, are two things that Brother David says. And they're real simple, but I think they're probably some of the best advice I've ever heard. The world is changed by your example, not your opinion. <coughs> Margaret Mead said, um, Always remember, <laughs> yeah, I studied this one a lot this morning. I'll always remember, hold on here, I took a picture of it. Always remember that you are absolutely unique, just like everyone else. As far as I know, this is a quote by David Keeling. Um, if you can choose bad, you can choose good. I've got some more David Keeling. Uh, let's see. You're built too low to the, to the ground, boy. I keep pitching them, you keep missing them. I tell you to read page 10, and you read page 5 twice. I buy you books and buy you books, but all you do is eat the covers. You're as sharp as a bowling ball. And uh, if you want to, you don't have to. I got a... Winston Churchill quote, uh, never give in, never give in, never, never give in, and things great or small, large or petty, never give in, except for to convictions of honor and good sense. That's encouraging for me to just stay true. I got one from Brother David. Um, <clears throat> if you're doing your absolute best and somebody tells you to keep doing better, well, you just, you're, you're fine. You just don't have to worry about it because you're doing your best. <laughs> 